Welcome gentlemen, this is the first experiment for me in what is called the flipped classroom. The basic theory behind this is that what we do in class is actually lower order thinking and what I said as homework is higher order. The flipped classroom is designed to do just that, flip those th two things around. The first thing that we will be doing in this little experiment is an analysis of the father and son song by Cat Stevens which of course was your assessment task. This is some stuff you may not know about the song. It was on the T for Tillman album. It was released in 1970. And of course we know it's about a father and a son and their troubled relationship. Now, these are the lyrics of the song. This is exactly how they appear. This is how they all appear in the sheet in front of you. A quick note of what the different colours mean. Blue is something that directly relates to your assessment task. Red relates to the idea of into the world and of course our module, module C. Now I've highlighted you because the first question of this assessment task asks you to talk about who you is. I'm pleased to say that the majority of you got this right and you is in fact the son. The next two lines about what the father thinks the son should do in terms of moving into the world. In order to, for him to be happy, he has to find a girl and marry her. Now this, no, this next line in blue is relevant to question two. Look at me, I am old, but I am happy. The father is here offering himself as an example of happiness. And he goes on in these lines to give him give his son more advice about how he thinks he should live his life. Now, the song at this point is very calm. All right, it's slower in its tempo. It just has the acoustic guitar. His voice is not strained at this point. Contentment means happiness, okay? If you're content with something, you're happy with the way it is. So any of those things that I just said could be an answer for number three. Now, this next slide is the son's perspective. Okay. Now question four asked you, is the son speaking directly to the father throughout the song? How do you know? What does this say about their relationship? He is not. If we look at that first line, he refers to his father as he. If he was speaking directly to him, he would say, how can I try to explain when I do you turn away? Okay, so the answer is no. The use of the second person is how we know, and it tells us that their relationship is troubled, distant, complicated. Any of these answers are sufficient. Now, the next one was a bit of a contentious one. From the moment I could talk, I was ordered to listen. What technique is this? Now, I've already told you that we accepted a few here, but there are also a few we didn't accept. Okay? Juxtaposition, yes. Paradox, yes. Irony, yes. Oxymoron, yes. Okay? Use of first person, we didn't accept. Okay? It is not command form because he's not being told to order, uh, to listen. Okay? He's not directly being told by someone. We're getting a recount of him being told. That's why it's not command form. Similar reason why it's not an imperative. Okay, uh, many of you know that the voice changed in this point to mark the son's rebelliousness through it getting louder and the voice sounding strained. Okay, now, now there's a way and I have to go, that I have to go away, I know I have to go, is the first indication that the son is making a transition into the world. Alright, we get some more idea of how he feels about that translate, transition later on. Now, number five, the question. I'm sort of skipping all over the place here, but that's cool. The son is frustrated with his father's expectations and the fact that he ignores his point of view. How do we know this? You could have used the first line, the third line, the fourth line. Okay, there's a lot of stuff in here that you could have used for that one. Now, number eight asks, how is the son's resolve to move into the world emphasized throughout the song? 
I know I have to go. That stuff in red. If you wrote any of that stuff in red, you would have got a mark. This is the father's point of view again, okay? Again, the voice changes, the music changes. He repeats himself. He's emphasizing that he's stuck in his ways. As a responder, we know that the father is just saying exactly the same thing he's always said. He doesn't hear the son's cries for help. He doesn't see, he see that the son doesn't feel like he understands him fully. Okay, all he sees is his point of view that, yeah, it's hard, but you get married and you'll all be sweet. Okay? That's all the father can see. Now, the final slide. All the times that I cried keeping all the things I knew inside is in blue because you could use it for number nine. But again, there's some more that you could be using there. It's hard, but it's hard to ignore is in red, even though it directly relates to number ten. It's in red because... What he's saying is, it's hard to do what I'm about to do, but it's harder to ignore the pull I feel away from my father, and it's harder to uh, ignore the, um, the feelings of resentment and rebelliousness that have built up inside me because this guy won't listen to me. He's trapped where he is, and he wants to do his own thing. Uh, again, now there's a way, and I know that I have to go away, is highlighted because it shows what he is thinking, okay? It shows how he wants to transition. It shows that he will transition into the world. So what I want you to do with this, guys, is either rewatch the video and make the annotations as it goes or make the annotations based on what you've heard. You do not need to do the test paper again. We will do that in class on Monday. All right, hopefully this experiment works. I enjoyed making the video. Hopefully you enjoyed listening to it and watching it. Thank you.